Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is December 17th of 2019. Let's see what's coming up. In a couple of days, I have to send that pacemaker data in, which I do every three months. So I'll be doing that again. I've, I've done it in the past a few times. But I will do it again so you can see and up. Well, I really won't update you on it. I'll show up again doing that. So that's coming up. Don't know if you can hear the aircraft going over head. Uh, we live near in an apartment complex near a um, reserve joint military uh, base the Air Force, Marines, and the Navy have reserve units out there that I know of. Um, I am back to using my, my um, let's see, open a new window here. I'm back using the, it's, uh, when did I get that? Let's see, let's check here. Let's go to Amazon. Go to Orders. Moving a little slow. That's because I'm so let's, uh, let's see, LG monitor, LG monitor, let's see. Okay, this is it. So this is a uh, LG water, <laughs> it's a, uh, 25 inch. Hmm. I guess that's right, yeah. I don't think it's... Yeah, you still can. Well, it says it's currently unavailable, so I guess not. It's 2560 by 1080. And it, like I said, it's an LG. That's what I have on the desktop now. And... Uh, Wonder why they don't show whatever this was replaced with or something, you know, if it has been. Oh, well, let's go down here and let's see. Let's see. Uh, ooh, too much. Well, here's a, uh, never heard of the company. A 32 inch. Well, it doesn't say wide. Okay, here's a. Okay, I guess this is. Well, this is it, I guess. The uh, one I have now. 25 inch, 21 by 19 ultra wide IPS monitor with split screen. Um. Uh, But why did I come over here for that? I guess just, uh, oh, anyway. Um, let's see, can I switch monitor, or not monitors, but see if I can switch this to, from the Brio to this one without crashing here. Yes, success. I'm using Manicam, by the way, as you can see. Um, this is just a bit of an update. It was time to uh, sort of update you on what's going around, going on around here.
back to this monitor, it really it's it's really a nice a nice monitor. I mean, I've got about four or five monitors sitting on the floor over there. I gave my son a uh, extra wide monitor, a much newer and better one than this. My uh, ex-wife, her computer desk in the living room, she has a nice monitor on it that I gave that I gave her or whatever. So, and I'm back using a 2015 monitor, but it's working. It works great. Um, I did, this is the new desk, and uh, I could get two monitors on this, but it would be really, you know, so. But this, this desk is working out fine for me. I, I would like a little more room, so I may eventually buy from the same, you know, from Amazon, the same, let me show you the desk, yeah. Go to uh, orders and do, well, I can just go down here, can't I? No, oh, uh, Hillary ordered it for me. I can go to wish list, right? Go to wish list and uh, go down here to, okay, this is the one I have, but they have a 55 inch. I have the 47 inch. So uh, this was very, well, I couldn't put it together. My arthritis, I'm looking at the wrong monitor or the wrong camera. I'm looking at the right one now. Uh, I may order this one in, the 55 inch, and move this 47 inch over there and put my Chrome, brand new Chrome box on it. And I have monitor, keyboard, I, you know, I have nice everything for it to set it up and I'll put it set up over there and then put the 55 inch one here and maybe go with two monitors on it or maybe not. Maybe just have, still have this one monitor, but give me a little more room for my uh, food, for my, uh, for my stuff. Um, so, like I said, this is just uh I was doing a little bit of searching today, or looking around a little bit, not much. And uh, I used, when I started out in life, I, well, when I graduated from high school, my intention was to go into the military, make a career out of it, but I was 40 pounds under the minimum weight requirement. But what I didn't, I knew I had hearing loss, but I just totally, uh, didn't think about it. I just I just ignored it for. Uh, that would have that would have kept you know if if the weight loss hadn't. Uh, the hearing loss for sure would have you know it kept me out of the military. So I like I said I ended up going to real estate school and then when I got out of real estate school I went to welding school Lincoln Electric Company welding school and. Cleveland, Ohio, actually it was Euclid, Ohio. And then I came and went to work, uh, well, first at a wrought iron decorative iron shop for a while. And uh, they really didn't need the type of welder. They, did, they didn't need a, a real welder. <laughs> um, then I went to work for the uh, Darby Corporation who made coal haulers or they didn't make them they, they we brought they brought in old uh, railroad coal haulers and they were cut down and you know new metal and things put on and sometimes new wheels depending on what they needed and i worked there for exactly one year i it was they had a building but there was no 
it might have had a, one side of you know it might have been walls on two sides or something but it was uh so it was bad in the summertime hot of course and especially when you're welding and especially when you catch fire occasionally uh but in the winter time it was miserable it was and so i made it i went at some point i would come into work well before i leave okay i'm going to go into work and i'm just going to uh i'm going to quit when it's lunchtime and then i'd go in and okay it'd be lunchtime and okay I, i'm just going to work the rest then you know sometimes i'd go in okay i'm okay it, it's lunchtime i'm not going to quit now i'll work till the next break then i'm going to quit next break well i made it three fourths of the you know so Finally, one day, I, I knew it was my anniversary, exactly, that I had hired in exactly one year before. And the same thing, I came in, oh, man, you know. And then it was like, okay, I'm, you know, made it halfway. And then it was, okay, this this is it. And then I quit at the end of the day. So I worked there exactly. I quit on my anniversary date. Later, I went to work for the company again but what was called the shipyard. It was not this building, but <laughs> there was no building. It was just down by the river. And uh, I worked that for three months. But uh, anyway, I made railroad coal haulers. Um, Looks, this is more like what they look if it's a bit little bigger, you know. Then that was so that was the first real welding job I had. And the last welding job that I had years, I don't know, 10 or so years later, I worked for the Dart Truck Company and they were. It was uh, Kenworth, you know, Kenworth trucks over the hall, over the road, 18 wheelers or whatever. Uh, and then it, that plant was right there and then right next to it was where I worked for the uh, Dart Truck Company. So it was the Kenworth Dart Truck Company. And we made gigantic, these pictures here, they don't really do uh, justice to how big the trucks, you get a little bit of an idea here but you don't, you know, you can't, comp well, not, we didn't make those kind of trucks. We made mainly, most of the trucks were these uh, end dump trucks. If there were a man standing, you know, the guy that's up here, if he were, he would be, <laughs> he wouldn't reach the axle, you know. Uh, but we made, let's see, we made a lot of these, and they were sent to, wherever the Peabody Coal Company was, and they might have had multiple locations. But we also sent, uh, built them, and uh, they went, like, to South Africa. We built some trucks that went to South Africa. I worked in the body shop. So we, you know, we, we made this part, the uh, body part here. Uh... But the trucks we made, for like to go to South Africa, we built them, then had to take them apart a little bit. Then they were shipped to South Africa. And then some of our welders and layout men went there and went down into the mine, you know, and then they were reassembled down in the mine. Uh, I didn't have enough, well, I, I didn't have enough seniority to go. I, I'm not sure if I'd want to go anyway, but... Uh, so this is the last welding job that I have, uh, or that I had, you know. So why did I tell you that? I'm not sure. Actually, I have a little tiny model of a dark truck, you know, matchbox or whatever they call those. Looking at the wrong camera again. This one has a light on it. Uh... When my grandson, grown grandson, was living with me, and it was, I had it setting someplace in here, you know, a little tiny uh, 
model, and he asked, why do you have a toy? And I said, oh, not a toy. I, I used to build those, he, you know, those kind of trucks. And he says, no, you didn't. I said, yeah, I, I did. I spent years, you know, working for that company. I'd worked for other companies, by the way, you know, but I, I, uh, but anyway, <laughs> he didn't believe me. So maybe that's what, you know, like, why would I lie about a thing like that? Um, anyway, that was a good union job, United Auto Workers, good pay. I was... Uh, well, not just me, but that was a union job, good pay, good benefits, and uh, I quit that job. But I really, starting with the, well, the, the wrought iron decorative iron shop that I worked at for a short period of time, that was not bad. But every welding job that I had after that for the next, 10 years or so or whatever it was. Uh, I don't know exactly how many years. Let's see. Yeah, I'd say about 10 years. Um, with my hearing loss, it, I couldn't hear anything. The type of hearing loss that I had, I could not hear anything at all. I mean, this supervisor could yell and scream there was uh and i couldn't hear uh because of the hearing i mean i could hear but i couldn't make anything out just i've talked about that before but uh i should not have been doing that kind of work that's not the re you know i had hearing loss since i was in grade school and uh, untreated and, uh, but, I mean, if I'd have been smarter, I should have known that, uh, I, I should not have been working in that type of an environment. So when I did, at the time, I didn't realize it was like, uh, my wife at the time had just started a tropical fish shop and she was going to run it and her mother was going to help her and then we got well we got married she had already had decided she was going to and the first date that we had was she was her mother and her were filling fish tanks with water for the first time and i went by and picked her up for a date not her mother i picked her up for a date so the the thing was that uh, her mother and her were going to take care of her then she didn't want to, and her mother didn't want to, and so then she, I didn't want to really, but we were just married and everything, so I quit, and we had that tropical fish shop for four years. Uh, we made money during the wintertime. During the summertime, we didn't make any money, and that just was not... Uh, not a viable, viable situation or whatever. I don't know. Maybe we made the mistake. Maybe we should have hired some teenager or a couple of teenagers to work during the summer there. And then I could have gone back to welding. Well, I shouldn't have been doing because of the hearing loss. I don't know. Life is, life is strange. I, uh, when John F. Kennedy announced the Peace Corps, I took the exam for the Peace Corps, aced the test. It was funny. I'm sure they did it uh, that, because I took, I was one of the first people to take the test. I didn't ace the test because I was good. I aced the test because, or because I was smart, because the, the test, as I mentioned before, was like everything on it I knew. I mean, I, you know. I'm sure after that that they went, you know, because that was the first test they gave nationwide. And as 
I'm sure they probably, when they got the results back and things, they many they probably changed the test and made it like a more normal or a better test. The reason I guess I didn't get into the Peace Corps was that uh, when I filled out the application, and I guess that's after I took the test, you know, they'd have you take the test and then give them the information once you pass the test. Uh, uh, for references, you know, it's because this is a background, you know, naturally they're going to do a background investigation on you. This, and brand also because it was, well, I think no matter when, you know, it was going to be a very stringent background, you know, exam that they're going to be sending you to other countries to represent the United States or whatever. Uh, so I think where, and I was, when I filling everything out, when it came to references or whatever, I, I didn't know who to put down. And I, now with hindsight, thinking about it, you know, I was in high school, I was in the ground observer corps. I was in the civil defense program. I, uh, did a weekly radio program that was broadcast around the world to Europe, Africa, and Latin America. And I had other stuff like that that I did when I was in high school. But I never thought to put down anybody, an official with this, the Ground Observer Corps, an official with the uh, whatever. And the only thing I remember putting down, you know, like for three personal references or whatever, <laughs> because I was, of course, that was back before computers. I was sort of like, young people nowadays, you know, young people nowadays, I guess, are what, in their room or the basement playing computer games or whatever. I was on a shortwave radio and uh, that was, you know, shortwave radio and picking up foreign stations and sending away for verification cards that came that I put on my wall and just, and writing articles and doing that radio program and all this kind of stuff. But uh, the only person I can remember that I put down was, and I, you know, I'd graduated from, you know, grade school. I didn't put anybody down from the high school. No, none of the Christian brothers or anybody. But I put down the pastor of St. Vincent's Church because he that's where I went to grade school for well for the last three years but also because my father had, had gone with him when they were boys together uh, and they had gone to the seminary together and my father <laughs> left the seminary and uh, didn't go through it but his Oscar Huber, uh, not Oscar Huber. Yeah. Yeah. Went on to become a Catholic priest, ended up coming back to the parish, and then I was, you know, went to that school, where, you know, where he was the, the pastor. What I didn't know was, because I did, after I wasn't going to school anymore, or you know, I didn't go to church. I didn't know he'd been transferred. He'd been transferred to Dallas, Texas. And uh, so anyway, I listed him. And anyway, the, the I got a, a uh, of course, I guess they could have, well, of course, I gave the address of the, you know, St. Vincent's. I guess they could have, uh, probably, I guess they've, anyway, I got a letter from the, uh, Peace Corps or whatever, or for, for not exactly the Peace Corps, but whoever does the investigations. And I guess it, it wasn't the FBI. I think they use another, it wasn't the FBI going around, I don't think. You think of it if you're having a background investigation that the FBI come in, but I think it was uh, some other, you know, federal government employees, but but I guess when they looked on the thing, you know, the address of St. Vincent's, uh, you know, 31st and Flora, they went there or whatever. And 
he wasn't the pastor there anymore. So, so I got a letter, you know, hey, uh, we can't pull up any information on you. Nobody knows you. You need to put in, uh, by that time, by that time I con- I'd convinced myself that because there was nonstop talking about the Peace Corps, I was convinced that uh, with my hearing loss, it had been hard for me to learn any language. And uh, with the military not taking me because I was 40 pounds on the minimum weight requirement, I, I convinced myself that, well, they wouldn't take me anyway. But Father Huber, who had uh, been transferred from Kansas City to Dallas, Texas, I didn't know he was in Dallas, Texas, or had even left because I didn't go to church anymore. I didn't know until uh, November 22nd when uh, President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, and I was watching the news on TV, and the news media said, you know, the Catholic priest just gave the last rites to John F. Kennedy. Well, I don't think they said that. I think they said, you know, we're going to, you know, here's, uh, and then they, you know, here he is, you know, Father Huber. And then they ask him, you know, and, uh, you know, how is, how is President Kennedy? And Father Huber said, I just gave him the last rites, you know, and, you know, he passed away. And then that was the news that went around the world, you know, went out by CBS News that I was watching, you know, Walter Cronkite or whatever went out, uh, you know, Catholic priest, Father Huber, says that President Kennedy, you know, died at such and such a time. And so, small world. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back sometime with uh, another video. As soon as I remember how to stop this thing from recording. Ah.